politics, cultural exchange, social life and ecological issues. These are only few areas where international organizations implement their projects. They cooperate with public and private partners and preserving peace for future generations is their principal goal. How do they arrange their work? What role is given to Kazakhstani initiatives? You'll find more on this in Kazakhstan International Vectors. EBRD is very much interested in financing the green energy sector, in particularly such projects as Yere Mental. We particularly want to expand our programs dealing with small and medium enterprises and with um, municipal um, infrastructure. People started to use coal as far as 3,000 years ago in ancient China and ancient Greece. Craftsmen used this fuel to melt iron and copper. However, its industrial usage began only in the late 18th century in a number of developed countries. In the middle of the 20th century, one half of global energy was generated from coal. But its negative effects in those times were still unknown. People knew about oil's useful properties as back as 6,000 years BC. However, its large-scale production began much later in the 19th century. The development of various industries, including car production, required immense amounts of fuel. And even in the contemporary world, the lion's share of oil is used for petroleum production. The first attempts of French developers to use gas to eliminate the streets in the early 19th century were vigorously opposed. Nevertheless, several years later, the UK government took interest in this invention and began to use this fuel for streetlights. Soon, extraction of gas gave rise to an entire branch of industry. Analysts predict that demand for fuel will grow every year. Meanwhile, the deposits of non-renewable energy sources are being exhausted. According to OPEC, Saudi Arabia, the leading oil producer, will run out of it as early as within 72 years. Along with that, the so-called coal famine is also around the corner. The US will be the first country to be affected by the situation. As a result, the world of today is facing the challenge of finding a worthy alternative to these fuels. Here, the renewable energy comes into play. No sharp transition to solar or wind energy is expected, experts say. Not to mention that recently the US and many European countries significantly reduced their alternative energy subsidies. However, there are countries which devote huge amounts of investment to green industry. For example, 80% of electricity in Brazil is generated by hydropower stations. In addition, it is actively developing its wind farms. Thailand and China are following the same path. According to the International Energy Agency's forecasts, in merely 20 years China will be the absolute leader in green energy production. Will the world be able to abandon conventional energy and switch to the safe mode? And who will subsidize such ambitious projects? In Germany, there are entire regions fully providing themselves with green energy and supplying it to neighboring countries. The regional industry is also shifting towards energy efficiency. Local poultry farms, for example, produce energy using own biogas. By 2020, Germany plans to increase its wind power capacity to 45 gigawatts and its solar batteries to 40 gigawatts. Significant hopes also lie with geothermal power technologies, as they are believed to bring as much as 600 megawatts. Kazakhstan adopts the experience of foreign countries and, along with that, creates its own unique developments. Among them is the multifunctional solar panel suitable for both private and industrial use. The device is capable of operating 24-7 under rainy weather conditions. At the same time, it is easy and cheap to install. No high-voltage power transmission lines are needed. Because of that, the remote location of power lines is no longer a problem. 
We maintain high water temperature, which is our heat transfer media. The temperature exceeds 100 degrees. It allows to perform such operations as water desalinization, drying of agricultural products and air conditioning. Power deficiency has turned into a global problem. According to UNESCO, almost one and a half billion people have no access to this resource. More than 2.5 million people are still using coal, shale or wood for cooking. Because of that, international organizations suggest to put emphasis on the development of renewable energy. Kazakhstan is right in the middle of this movement. Thus, by 2024, green technologies are expected to produce up to 5% of all energy in the country. Solar panel inventors say that the demand for their products is rapidly growing. For safe and efficient production of alternative energy, international organizations establish special standards and finance this branch. Thus, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development has been funding and supporting green projects throughout the world for several years already. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is an international organization which makes investments in various projects and furthers the development of innovations and economic growth in 34 states. It was established in 1991. The organization's headquarters is located in London. Wind energy in Kazakhstan is given the highest preference in comparison with other green technologies. It is explained by the fact that the wind speed in large parts of the country exceeds 6 meters per second. These figures can be observed in the south, southeast and southwest of Kazakhstan. It makes the development of wind farms very attractive. At the same time, this business is also a cost-based business. That is why EBRD helps in realizing of such projects. The project on financing of Yeremen Tau wind farm construction is one of the most recent projects. The region will be supplied with electricity without damaging the environment. Kazakhstan has a huge potential of renewable energy sources. By 2040, the inexhaustible energy sources will make up one half of all power industry, scientists say. At the same time, in EU countries, wind power will account for 20% of all energy production. The amount of investments into this branch is expected to reach almost $8 trillion. And that is the main reason why international organizations, including the EBRD, are financing this sector. However, the bank's primary purposes were quite different and had nothing to do with green technologies. Weakened economy, large scientific potential and shortage of funds for its development. These were the consequences of the Cold War. For improving the market economy and living standards, a number of countries created the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. 60% of the organization's credits were assigned for the supporting of the private sector and the rest 40% to the country's budgets for the development of small and medium businesses. Uh, EBRD was set up in 1991 to help encourage um, countries that had been part of the former um, Soviet Union or Eastern Bloc to help transition to a market economy. So in Kazakhstan, um, EBRD has been active now for uh, more than 20 years and um, we've grown significantly. We now have um, two main branches in Almaty and Astana, but we're also active in um, six other locations regionally throughout the country. Since 2006, the EBRD activities spread to some other countries. Among them were Mongolia, Turkey, Jordan and Tunisia. Along with that, the bank expanded the list of finance branches, and green energy has become one of them. Experts characterize traffic infrastructure as the image of a state. That is why millions or even billions of dollars are spent on its development. That is the reason why the development of road projects is one of EBRD's priority areas. The nearest plans of the bank include purchasing 20 trolley buses and 25 buses for the Kyrgyz city of Osh to the amount of more than 9.5 million euros. 
During its work in Kyrgyzstan, EBRD invested more than $530 million and implemented more than 90 various projects. 39 of them were in the financial sector. In Kazakhstan, EBRD also invests into the public transport and has a more ecologic approach to this issue. The number of trolley buses and gas-powered buses is being increased. The total amount of investments into this branch throughout Central Asia made up about $1 million. EBRD has worked with the Akimat of um, Almaty to provide over 400 CNG, compressed natural gas buses, and 200 um, trolley buses. Apart from state project support, the bank also assists small and medium business enterprises. First of all, this refers to the information support. For the last years, more than a thousand of companies received various types of counseling. EBRD helps enterprises to study the market, develop their own brands, create websites, implement development programming, and many other things. We operate in eight offices throughout Kazakhstan, and we work with entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises to help provide them with the advice that they need in order to successfully produce, manufacture, and export. The organization also helps Kazakhstani entrepreneurs in getting access to international markets. One of the successful examples is an organic food company. Um, one of the projects this year, it's a company called, they produce um, edible oils, um, organic oils, like um, from sesame seed, from linseed, from pumpkin seed, etc. And uh, we help the company with marketing advice to help become a major producer, and it's um, now um, exporting its, its project. Recently, the organization developed another program to support small and medium businesses. About $200 million have been invested for its realization. Now entrepreneurs can get a financial assistance via Kazakhstani banks. And the importance of this program is that we are also helping to train people in the Kazakhstani banks so that they have the correct um, risk management procedures in order to ensure that the lending which is done um, to the small and medium enterprises is sustainable and um, will eventually be repaid. During 20 years of work in Kazakhstan, the bank implemented more than 185 projects to the amount of $70 billion. Several heat and water supply projects in Karaganda region, costing about $90 million, are to be realized within the framework of the new economic policy Nurli Jol jointly with EBRD. Another project is related to road building. In this case, the investment amount will reach 2.5 trillion tenge. 50% of this sum will be investments of international organizations. Experts think that the major part of large state projects can be realized by attracting private entrepreneurs. Therefore, engaging governments and private entrepreneurs in dialogue is another task of EBRD. Use is an example of a particularly successful project that we're working on right now, and that's the Ring Road around Almaty, the Bakad um, project. Uh, we worked very closely with the Ministry of Economy and the government to put in place the necessary legislation to launch the first public-private partnership um, project for the Ring Road. The fall in oil prices after the 2008 global crisis drove to bankruptcy dozens of companies around the world. Thousands of specialists lost their jobs. More than 20 countries experienced devaluation of their currencies. As a result, international organizations assumed the role of financial donors. For example, EBRD developed a special anti-crisis program for its member countries. Long-term loan granting and attraction of foreign financial donors became its key instrument. In 2012, the construction of a largest solar electric plant began in California. The project was completed last year. The plant capacity is 550 megawatts. It is enough to supply with electricity 160 farms. The number of the solar panels reached 9 million. The total cost of this project made up $2.5 million. 